Hello, and thanks very much for joining us for some help in Clause 4 Context. My name is Jim Moran, and you can reach me at jim at simplifyiso.com. There are three things that are important to know about context. The first one is that now, with the new standard, you need to determine your context. We'll talk about how to do that in just a minute. The second one is that the word customers has been expanded to the phrase interested parties. This will make somewhat of a difference in the way you approach your management system. And finally, the requirement for specific documented procedures has been removed and now your organization can decide for yourselves how much or how little documentation you want. You might be interested to know that this standard requires the same number of records that ISO 9001-2008 required, so you won't have to make up anything new, and you may even want to combine some to simplify things a little bit. So let's get started with context. You'll notice when you read the standard that there are some notes about context, and the the method for determining context is to consider your internal issues, your external issues or conditions or situation, and finally, you want to match these up with your interested parties. Many people have achieved this very simply by making up a table like this one and you can see in the first column we have internal issues. Some people think that the word issues just means problems. It doesn't. It really means internal conditions, internal situations, internal activities, all kinds of things. The external issues are things that affect you but you really can't control and then of course interested parties you'll see in the third column are people who either can be affected by your management system or perceived to be affected by your internal management system. You can see here at the bottom of clause 4 in your standard that there are notes about first of all the fact that issues can be either positive or negative Secondly, uh, there are some information on what to think about when you're determining your external issues. And then finally, your internal issues have some ideas for you here. One method that I've found has been really popular and really helpful and also very simple to do is something that you may have already been doing in your organization called a SWOT exercise. The letters of the word SWOT stand for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. The way it works out with most organizations is that the strengths, the weaknesses, and the opportunities are typically things that you find internally. The threats are usually things that are coming from the outside. So you could work together in a group, create a cross-functional team, do some brainstorming, and see if you can use those as guidelines for determining your context. Once that's done, then you can figure out who the interested parties are. Sometimes they might line up. For example, an internal strength might be excellent compliance to regulatory requirements. If that were the case, the interested party to go along with that strength would be a regulatory body. Obviously, your customers are interested parties, your competitors are interested parties, and so on. So take your time determining the context because the context is going to actually be the cornerstone for your entire management system. We've included a spreadsheet in the downloadable material, and this spreadsheet starts off with context. You can see a bit of a screenshot of it right here, and you can use this to keep track of where your context will be documented. Now, the standard does not require that you actually document it and make a table. However, the standard does require that you monitor it and keep abreast of any changes in the three areas, the internal issues, external issues, and interested parties. The simplest way to do that is to have a table like this one and then review that table in your management review. 
you'll find management review can be very handy for meeting the requirements in the next section, leadership. It's not perfect, but it gets you thinking and can probably get some good discussions started. The other thing that's interesting about a table like this is it's very easy to display it in your documentation if you have documentation around your context. And it's easy to understand, easy to follow, and if you build it in a table in your document, it's very easy to modify it. In a table format, this information is very easy to review, monitor in management review. So 4.1 talks about context, internal and external issues. 4.2 talks about interested parties. 4.3 has the title scope, and the scope that's on your certificate right now is the scope that you'll use. Just make sure that you meet all the requirements in this section. And basically, unless you've changed your business radically since your 2008 registration, your scope that's on your certificate should be just fine. Make sure you give some consideration to the other areas when you are designing and developing and implementing your management system. The last section in this standard, 4.4, talks about the system as a whole. One of the important things to notice in this section is that there are two requirements around processes. One of the requirements is to identify the processes that you need to fulfill customer and other legal and other requirements. And the next one is to show their interaction. It talks about inputs and outputs. So if you use a process map, this happens to be a cross-functional process map, you can see that a map like this shows the in inputs, shows the outputs, shows the interaction. And it's also a very handy tool for doing internal audits. Remember that the standard has removed all the requirements for documenting procedures. You might remember the 8794 version required 20 documented procedures. The 2000 and 2008 version required six. This standard has removed all the requirements for specific documented procedures and you are in the position where you can decide exactly what you want to have in the way of documented procedures. One thing to consider when you're trying to determine how much is how skilled are your employees. If you hire highly skilled employees and give them decent orientation training, check to see if they actually can do the service you're delivering or work the machinery that you're hiring them for. And then show them what the end result needs to look like. You can even mention risks along the way at the same time. By removing highly prescriptive procedures, you will allow people the opportunity to find ways to do their specific tasks better. When you have highly prescriptive and very specific procedures, you're locking people into a certain way of creating an outcome. But remember, at the same time, there may be some regulatory bodies whose requirements you have to meet that might actually require a specific type of procedure and maybe even want the procedure in a particular format. So flowcharts will work to meet requirements. You might want to add another level, maybe hyperlink from one of the boxes to a more detailed explanation. You might want to hyperlink from a box to a form that people need to fill in. So keep it simple, make sure it's very clear, intuitive, and by the way, flowcharts are a great tool for training new employees if you happen to be in an industry where turnover might be a bit higher than average. It's also a wonderful tool for doing internal audits. So a flowchart can serve a whole lot of purposes, give you a big bang for your buck. So that takes care of context, interested parties, we touched on scope, and then finally, the requirements for documenting your procedures. I'm Jim Moran. You can reach me at jim at simplifyiso.com. Take a good look at the downloads. We're including what we're calling a migration map, and it has all the clauses of 9001 in there, the titles at least, so you can very easily match up what you have now with what you need for the new standard. You can use the spreadsheet to keep track of your transition. You could actually even show the spreadsheet to the registrar when they come 
to show the auditor where you have met all these requirements in your own system. There's a second tab down below called records and it has a list of all the documentation requirements for this standard. Don't hesitate to pop over to our site, simplifyiso.com. Take a look at some of these ISO tips. You might find them very helpful. And we'll also have some free two-minute transition tips there for you as well. Thanks. Bye for now, and feel free to drop me a note anytime, jim at simplifyiso.com. Thanks very much.